beloved listeners, welcome to Grace Life Komi Podcast, brought to you by the publication arm of Chimdi Ouna Ministry International Komi. Our vision is to empower individuals to reach full spiritual completeness in God through the insightful teaching and preaching of the Word of God. The Grace Life Komi Podcast offers every believer a continuous stream of fresh, simple, yet deeply impactful teaching episodes that engender the revelation light of Christ Jesus. Our objective is to motivate and uplift individuals through the provision of enlightening content that facilitates a profound exploration of faith. Grace Life Comic Podcast is dedicated to fostering a beneficial impact on the lives of our audience, aiming to positively transform their spiritual journey and enhance their connection with faith. Chim Diyamfunke Oahuna delivers teachings that aim to illuminate the profound truth and significance of the person and the work of Christ, providing essential guidance and instruction for nurturing and developing believers in their relationship with Christ. We urge you to remain connected to the Grace Life Coming Podcast and engage with us, a platform where believers can immerse themselves in teachings, cultivate knowledge, and form connections with like-minded seekers of Christ Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. We give God thanks and praise for another privilege of fellowship in His presence. To Jesus, be all the glory and praise forever. This is um, the words of Jesus. We are beginning to study the words of Jesus. And um, we're trusting God for a glorious journey as we go on. Um, one appreciate all our listeners all over the nations of the earth. The good Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. One appreciate you for your likes, your shares, and um, every you know investment you make into your spiritual growth. Pray the Lord strengthen you in Jesus' precious name. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask you for revelation, for insight. We ask that you teach us, grant us understanding that we may live in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Um, once again, hallelujah. Um, we're looking at the, um, we're going to be studying the words of Jesus and we're going to be looking at starting off from the book of Matthew. What happens is that we go from Matthew and um, when we go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, for adventure, any, any um, words repeats itself will not take it in the next gospel. I get what I'm saying. So we'll look at it in Matthew. If the word repeats itself in Mark, we won't take it. Praise God forevermore. Because we have already taken it in Matthew. The same thing, Luke and John. Amen to Jesus. Alright, so we are starting up on uh, as rendered by Matthew's gospel. Um, the first word spoken by Jesus. And that is in Matthew chapter 3 verse 15. And Jesus answered and said unto him, So far it to be soon now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Amen to Jesus. This was the first words of Jesus rendered by Matthew's gospel. Amen to Jesus. Now, um, in this study, we're going to be understanding why Jesus, you know, made this phrase. And I'm um, looking into the phrase by the grace of God in depth and seeing as much truth we can get from this phrase. Amen to Jesus. All right. Um, now, the first thing we need to understand why Jesus made this praise was that um, he did this because it was God's will for him to be baptized by John. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Uh, so Jesus um, saying to John that they will be fulfilling all righteousness in the sense of doing what God wants. Amen to Jesus. Now, so basically Jesus was driven by the will of the Father. Amen to Jesus. Um, uh, um, um. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my Father and to fulfill it. So basically everything Jesus lived for and died for was the will of the Father. Praise God forevermore. So um, it was all about the will of the Father and it's all about the will of the Father. And um, basically we discovered that Jesus took this step not because he liked it or not because he didn't like it but because of the will of the Father. Now we need to understand something as believers in the Lord Jesus. We don't do things because we like them. Or because we don't like them. We do things because it is what the Father wills for us to do. And so sometimes we do things we like 
And sometimes you do things you don't like simply because it's the will of the Father. So basically, our will does not determine what we do. It's the will of the Father that determines what we do. This is the precedent that Jesus, you know, created there. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. So for Jesus, doing the will of the Father was the right thing to do. Not doing the will of the Father is the wrong thing to do. So basically, what is right and wrong for a Christian? Right and wrong is not morality for a believer in the Lord Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Right and wrong is not morality. Right and wrong is the will of the Father. It's the will of the Father that determines what is right and what is what wrong. Over the time, we discover that um, a lot of times, Christians want to be politically correct. They want to be morally sound. But we must remember something. that We don't, we are, we don't move by morals. We don't move by, you know, um, what is ideologically sound. Are you getting what I'm saying? We actually move by what is the will of God. So, basically, the will of God may not be, let me use the word, right for some people but it is the will of god now i learned that um, 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 the uh, apostle andrew was killed because they told him to not preach in the name of jesus and they kept you preaching in the name of jesus and they killed him when they threatened the apostles in acts the book of acts and they told them not to preach in the name of jesus any longer and they told them who will obey you or god now so if we're looking at if we're looking at uh, let me use the word uh, um, 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 moral correctedness are you getting what i'm saying from a human standpoint when the law is given and they say this thing is not right or when the authority says don't do this from authority point of view remember romans about uh, chapter 13 tells us about uh, authority that has been placed by god for us are you get what i'm saying now so when the authority comes and says don't do this it's wrong are you getting me if you do it you preach the law it is wrong are we together now but when we are dealing with the will of god there are times the will of God will override authority. So if you want to work with basically morality, we would not always be right when related with God. But if we want to work with the will of God, we will always be right when related with God. Now, if we, we need to also understand something that there are things that the will of God will tell us not to do. And like I said, they may be Morally, they may be um, uh, um, um, democratically wrong. Let me do what democratically wrong. Or leadership may not accept them as right, uh, as right. But the will of God says you do them. Now we have such situations. Praise God forevermore. And you have to do And then what do you have to do? You have to choose between the will of God and between the will of God and what society is saying is right and what uh, what they call it, um, the leadership and the government is saying is right. And so. This is what Jesus was doing here. The will of God. And we're going to face this as we go in and walk with the Lord. More often than not, when you do the will of God, if you're not careful, you will hurt people. If, if not, you're not careful, when you do the will of God, you will hurt people. You will hurt people. You get what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, uh, my wife was preaching a program last week and she said something that, you know, Lot's wife, she, she was sympathetic towards the people of Sodom and that's why she looked back. But, and there's, there's a point that the Lord taught us there that you must not allow sympathy make you disobey god so there are times the will of god may make you look like you are morally wrong now we have things like you know in this in the in the in the in the in the um, developed world we have what they call um words like you know they, uh, they, they, they use words like you are not um, uh, when you say some kind of word they say you are being too harsh or you know there are some kind of way they coin it when you when you hit on Things that God does not like. If they coin it in a particular um, political way. And then you hear words like, don't be judgmental. And things that, see, when you walk in the will of God, you'll be judgmental for human beings. You'll be, you can't help, you'll be judgmental for human beings because what God does not like, He doesn't like. You cannot paint it. Are we together? And so also, when you even walk in the will of God, there are times that you would remove, you would, you would look unsympathetic. You look unsympathetic. You look unemotional. Are you getting what I'm saying? And you also look. There are many. There are many looks you look. But you must choose whether it is the will of God that you take over the will of men, or the will of men over the will of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to face this challenge as we go in our work with the Lord. And sometimes the will of men looks good, and they even look like God. Are you getting it? Yeah. They look like the will of God, but they are not actually. The will of God, and we have to choose this as we go on 
in our work with the Lord. Amen to Jesus. All right. And so, um, um, Jesus was telling John, we are going to do this because it is what God wants us to do. Amen. The easy English translation renders rendering for this verse of scripture, you know, but this is true. In um, easy English translation, it says, Jesus replied, this time, do what I ask you. God wants you to baptize me, and we must do everything that is proper. So, John did what Jesus asked him to do. Are we together? Now, if, Jesus, if, if his English says, this time, that means, um, maybe before then, John could ask Jesus, Jesus could ask John to do something that John doesn't want to do. Because um, from um, biblical studies, we understand that the, why they grew together, um, John left home as a youth, so he didn't have much time with Jesus. But why they grew together, they lived far from each other. And we always saw Jesus as a more righteous person than him. You get what I'm saying? Now, so see him as a more righteous person than him. It was obvious that, you know, the time that Jesus would tell him to do this, and he would say, no, I won't do it. You are more righteous than him. You get that? Even though both of them, you know, John the Baptist was the greatest Old Testament prophet and the nation for the New Testament said, you know, both of them were, let me use the word, you know, they were special kind of children. You get what I'm saying? But even John knew that Jesus was higher than him. Jesus is higher than, than him. Amen to John. So I believe there were times that, and also, John was older than Jesus for six months. So there were times that John, John, Jesus would tell John, do this, and John would say, no, you are more righteous than me. I will not do it. But Jesus comes and says, this time around, you will do it, for it is what? This is what is proper. Now for John, John felt it was not proper. I get what I'm saying. Because for John, this is the person meant to be baptizing in. How would I baptize you? It is not proper. You see, when we talk about something that is proper in, well, in, the, in the ways of God, you see, um, there are things that, there are things that, you know, we may see as improper, but God sees them as what? Proper. That's why we need to understand the ways of God and the precepts of God so that we don't end up using our mind to judge God instead of our heart to judge God. Are you get what I'm saying? Now, you know, some things were happening for a period of months and weeks. Initially, when the first one did happen, I was like, ah, but God stopped me. Then after the other one, I was like, I was talking and talking, and God just, God didn't interfere at all. And then I, was, I knew that God, come, this, this is getting out of hand because I went up destroying everything that has been built. And this test is turning to a torture. And I, I, I just prayed a prayer on a Thursday. And by Sunday, I saw the answer to the prayer. Praise God evermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. What are we saying? But for others, it may not look proper. Are you getting me? But because for God it is proper, He gave me a quick answer. Are we together? And so that's why as we walk with the Lord, we need to know what is proper from His real point of view. Not for what people, even ministers of the gospel say is proper. You would go to a point where you walk with the Lord. And this comes to a lot of analysis, you know, like we understood a while ago, that, you know, um, Eli was Samuel's spiritual father. Amen. He was his priest, his father, and every of that. And then he, he, he began to hear, Samuel began to hear the voice of God through the voice of Eli. But Eli got to a point where he understood that this boy has come of age where he will hear God for himself. Are we together? This boy has come of age where he will hear God for himself. Amen. And so what did Eli do? Eli told him, Now when the Lord says, calls you, say, speak for your what? Servant hearing. Now it takes a humble man of God to be able to say that. Are we together? Many would not say that. Because they want the, 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 the son or the member to keep hearing him instead of hearing God. Are we together? Now, so when it comes to what is proper, we have to refer to God directly. It's only God that knows what is proper. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, Jesus' first words and action as rendered by Matthew's gospel. As rendered by Matthew's gospel, reveal what Jesus had cried, passion, and drive was. Are we together? It revealed his heart cry. It revealed his passion. It revealed his drive. It revealed his meat, his food. Are we together? All right. Now, so um, it also de de revealed his desire as a son of man. Are we together? And what was his desire? 
His desire was what? To do the will of his father. Are we together? Now, over the years, I've learned and I'm still learning to do the will of the father. You know, at times, it's not easy. But I will pray and pray and pray till I get the will of the father established. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. John chapter 4 verse 34. Bible says, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So we can see the food of Jesus. His food is to do what? To do the will of, he, of, of the father who what? Who sent him. That's his meat. That's his meat. To do the will of the father who sent him. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright, so um, it makes us understand makes us understand um, what Jesus lived for. And basically, that is what every born again child of God is meant to live for. We are meant to live for the will of the Father. And you say, how do I know the will of the Father? What of God is the will of the Father? The more we go into the word of God, the more we know the will of the Father. And basically, some, some Christians say, what, ah, what, if it's not, what if it is not black and white in scriptures? Praise God forevermore. If you still on the word of God, if you stay on the word of God and you stay in the place of prayer, you have promptings in your spirit. You have promptings in your spirit. And you have the still small voice lead you. You have the voice of the Holy Spirit lead you. You have continuous promptings in your spirit, man. Are we together? Continuous promptings in your spirit, man. Continuous. That's why we have to stay on the word more. Because there are some things that will not come black and white in scriptures. I get what I'm saying. But you have to know the will of the Father concerning that matter. So, if you don't stay on the word, you cannot, the will of, you cannot know the will of the Father. So when you stay on the word, you'll be, the Holy Spirit will give you promptings, the Holy Spirit will give you witnesses, and the list will go on. And as you, have, as you learn to work with the Lord, you'll be able to know what works and what does not work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Because for some of us, there are, the way, there are ways that you know, God speaks to us. There are ways that God speaks to us. And we should learn that as we go on in our work with the Lord. You should be able to understand the signals, understand the, the, the signs and every of that that the Lord is speaking to you. Amen to Jesus. Okay. By this, Jesus, the Son of Man, gives mankind a perfect example of what our heart cry, our passion, our drive, and our meat and desire is meant to be. And what is that? It is to do the will of the father it is to do what the will of the father that should be our heart cry that should be our desire that should be our meat that should be our passion that should be the only thing that drives us to do the will of the father jesus chose to do this as the son of man to make mankind understand that we can do same are we together he did this so we can make us understand we can also what do same question is it possible to do the will of god every time yes it's possible to do the will of god every time every time every time every time you can live 24 hours seven days a week doing the will of god very possible praise god forevermore man can do the will of god when he lives in and is led by jesus who serves the father perfectly are you getting what i'm saying we can do the will of god when we live in christ we we'll live in Christ because Jesus serves the Father perfectly. Are we together? So we can we can actually do the will of God when we live in Christ. The Bible says in Him we live and move and have our being. Amen. Now, so that's just the easiest way to do the will of God. Just live in Christ. Just keep living in Christ. Just have your being in Christ. Amen. It just it will just make the whole thing easy. Actually, to be Christ will be serving God the Father perfectly for you. You'll be the one who will be actually doing the whole service for you. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. And now um, the second um, reason why Jesus said this is, um, you know, um, scholars has, have given many interpretation of Jesus' explanation or reason he gave to John the Baptist. Why John was baptizing. There been many scholarly, you know, interpretations and experiences explanations many 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 so um jesus was sinless so he had no sin to repent from but he had come to earth 
to die on behalf of the sins of what of humanity praise god forevermore now remember the baptism of john the baptist was for sinners it was not for saints are you getting what i'm saying praise god forevermore that i said i baptize you with water unto repentance unto repentance but is it that comment after me whose laces i'm unworthy to untie says he will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire are we together the baptism of, of john the baptist the baptism for repentance the baptism for repentance praise god for all john the baptist was the one who who pioneered baptism water baptism it was for repentance are we together but the baptism of jesus is not the water baptism it's a baptism for what for, with the holy ghost and with fire that's why the bible may, paul makes us there was paul makes us understand that when we when we uh, were baptized into christ and we're what and we what when we died we're baptized into christ and we resurrected with him are we together now so um the baptism of john the baptist was basically basically an old testament baptism amen to jesus old testament was a repentance of sin and he did it for the pharisees he did it for people that came to be baptized but you see even though they repented of their sins their sins were not yet washed that's the, that's the challenge with that baptism so he is uh, he actually knew that his baptism was was a um, was uh, let me do what it was not the main thing it was a temporary fix it was not the main thing the, the main baptism is the baptism of the holy ghost and fire and the holy ghost and fire only comes after you have received jesus and a personal savior so after all your sins have been washed away then the holy baptism of the holy spirit and fire comes so the baptism of jesus succeeds Repa um, salvation are you get what i'm saying the baptism of john the baptist it um precedes um repentance which is change of mind but it doesn't assure washing of sins are we together so it was a limited baptism very limited baptism the bible of Jesus was is all there is to baptism are we together now we're going to be looking at baptism in this study we're going to be looking at it and you know there have been so many fights as to baptism you know many people are saying that you know don't need to baptize and john the baptist was the one who pioneered baptism don't need baptism and every of that um uh, the actual fact is that when we get there we will understand quite a number of things but let's wait till we get there amen to jesus so some people agree that baptism would that, that, that the baptism of jesus would identify jesus with that sacrificial rule and symbolize his coming death and resurrection amen to jesus all right so Scholars have believed that um, there are many reasons Jesus was sinless, and so he, ne he never had any sin to repent from, but he had come to the earth on behalf of mankind to die for the sin of humanity. So now, if he's sinless, and if he came to die for mankind, what is he used for a baptism? Are you getting what I'm saying? Because this baptism is meant for sinners, not for saints. Let alone God. Even saints don't need it let alone god are you getting what i'm saying that's why technically speaking baptism of john the baptist baptism is in mansion is not needed by saint technically speaking but technically speaking is league is needed because it's a symbolic show now so scholars believe that the baptism this baptism that jesus did would what identify jesus with that sacrificial rule and symbolize his coming death and resurrection so, because basically, when you are dipped into the water, it symbolizes your death to sin. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when you are dipped into the water, it symbolizes your death to sin. And when you are brought out of the water, it symbolizes your what? Your resurrection to life. Praise God forevermore. Dipped into the water, it symbolizes your what? Your death to sin. Brought out of the water, it symbolizes your what? Your resurrection to life. Amen to Jesus. Now, so, but Jesus, remember, Jesus said he came to fulfill the law. So, to fulfill the law, he had to finish every requirement of the law. And one major requirement of the law was baptism. Baptism. It was a major requirement of the law because it was unto repentance. Are we together? John the Baptist was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. So, he was the greatest prophet under the law. Prophets before he never baptized anybody. The only person that did something like baptism was Neman. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? But it was not baptism. Are we together? But Neman was actually a symbolic, a symbolic 
and typological show of what John the Baptist was to come and do. Are we together? So it was a symbolic and typological show of what John the Baptist was going to come and do because Nehemiah went in plagued. By the seventh time when he was coming out, he came out what? Whole. So he was, his skin had a rebirth. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. So because the, the, the um, leprosy virus actually kills the skin. It starts off by eating off the fingers. Is that not so? And it's actually gradually eating off the person. It's killing and killing and killing. So it's a sin. leprosy symbolizes sin in the Old Testament. It symbolizes sin. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so and the basis of sin is death. So what Neman did there was what Elisha told Neman to do was just symbolic of um, salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it was first symbolic for what John the Baptist was doing. Come into the water and your sins die for you to come alive praise god forevermore so but john the baptist you know did something that was very very you know symbolic in the old testament and jesus had to fulfill that law there was no law that jesus left unfulfilled no law. even the final law which was the one of what the high priest when mary wanted to touch him he said do not talk me for now i have not ascended to my father the high priest, before he goes to make atonement, he doesn't allow anybody to touch him and doesn't touch anybody. That's it. Doesn't allow anybody to touch him and doesn't touch anybody. It's after he's done with his atonement, he can now start allowing people to touch him and he can touch him. So Jesus even fulfilled that last legal requirement. Are we together? So Jesus had to fulfill the requirements of the law. The requirements of what? Baptism. Why? So that he can be associated with his brethren. And he came in unto his own. That his own what? Knew him not. Now so if you, you see, when people see that, if you see what Jesus went through, if you see in our time, you say Jesus committed a sin. Yeah. If it's in our time, you say Jesus committed, or God was trying to test Jesus, or the Father was trying to train Jesus, or Jesus failed. That is why he had to come and go through all this human laws are you get what i'm saying because when people see you being humbled the first thing they think of is that you have sinned or you are being punished for something but they never understand that there are some legal requirements that god will want you to fulfill because of the great the the the, 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 the tax that is ahead of you are you get what i'm saying yeah so um jesus did this so as to what symbolize his coming death and what resurrection into the water, die out of the water, what resurrection. So Jesus did not come to be baptized for repentance, he came to be baptized for symbolism. Are we together? For symbolism, for symbolism, for symbolism, and that symbolism was his coming death and his what resurrection. And this is hinge on the truth that baptism symbolizes death with Christ and resurrection with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, like we've always known. That the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Everything in the Old Testament is symbolic for, for a, true, a, a reality in the New Testament. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything in the Old Testament is symbolic for the truth, the reality in the New Testament. The Old Testament is shadows. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, um, we know that when a shadow is there, it means the substance is close by. Are we together? And that's the reason why you don't rule off the Old Testament. Because if there is no substance, there will be no shadow. If it's actually the presence of the substance that gives the shadow. So, if we're talking about the Old Testament, the actual fact is that the New Testament was what gave birth to the Old Testament. It was that the Old Testament manifested physically before the New Testament. The Bible says, the um, book of Revelation says, for the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. What was the foundation of the earth? Genesis chapter 1. That was the foundation of the earth. The Lamb was slain there. After Genesis chapter 1, we entered into Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve problem. And then we went on, went on. The Exodus chapter 20, the law was given. But before Exodus chapter 20, there was what? Genesis chapter 1. That was when the Lamb was slain. So who gave birth to him? It's actually the New Testament that gave birth to the Old Testament. And the Old Testament now what? The New Testament gave birth to the Old Testament. The New Testament was spiritual. It was spiritual. The Old Testament was physical. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then the other man came manifested physical because the spiritual always gives birth to the physical. 
New Testament is spiritual. It was there. It's the substance. But the shadow of it was reflecting on it. And then, after the t- exactly, when it was time, the substance came in the fullness of it. And so that's the reason why we don't do, a- do away with the shadow and say we are holding the substance. Or do away with the substance and say we are holding the shadow. It doesn't work. If you remove, if, if, I, I, I once saw something that the only thing that does not have shadow is light. Can be light. It doesn't have shadow. And you cannot say, praise God forevermore. So now these laws of uh, Old Testament, New Testament, we just need to understand how they, how they operate. But Jesus came to fulfill the law. And he had to symbolically fulfill it. Everything was symbolic. Everything was symbolic. As silver tried in the furnace of the earth seven times. So the word of God is tried. That is why Jesus went to the furnace of the earth. He went to the furnace of the earth. He was buried. He went to the furnace of the earth. Everything has to be what? Fulfilled. Every, everything has to be fulfilled. Are we together? Every law, every, every and go through pro, uh, prophecies concerning the Messiah. He was supposed to come from a kingly lineage. Jesus came from the lineage of David. All the prophecies were fulfilled. Are you getting what I'm saying? But the, the Jews were still because they did not see a militant Messiah. Been, yes, he fulfills all the prophecy. But we we want a militant. <laughs> we're especially the militant Messiah. And so they, they, they won't they won't they, some of them have not accepted, but we know that they will accept. Praise God forevermore. Now, and this is the angel. Uh, so we know that baptism um, symbolizes death with Christ and resurrection with him. In this way, baptism will allow Jesus and John together to fulfill all righteousness by what? Publicly foreshadowing the way sin can be forgiven via death with Christ and resurrection with him. So this was just a public show of how sin can be forgiven. So what was Jesus trying to do? Just to pass a message. This is how sin will be forgiven. You die with me, you resurrect with me. That is how sin is forgiven. John the Baptist, what he was doing was repentance, baptism unto repentance, but not forgiveness. Are you getting what I'm saying? The only one that can forgive is Jesus. And so Jesus, the one that can forgive, came to show them how forgiveness is done, but he used the tool of John the Baptist. Are we together? Why? Because he must fulfill the law. Amen. And so more often than not, we discover that when as Christians, we don't understand how these things operate, we don't know the value of these things. That's why when you go for baptism in mansion, you should understand that this is foreshadowing, publicly showing how sin is forgiven. So I'm showing to the people that this is how my sin was forgiven. I died with Christ and I resurrected with him. And I don't think there's any problem with showing people. <laughs> Are we together? I don't think there's any problem with I think you should, you should be proud to show people that I have died with Christ and have resurrected with him. The Apostle Paul said it like, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But the life I live, I live by him who died and gave himself. So you should be proud. And then he went to went and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For the power of God unto salvation to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. So baptism should be showing I'm crucified with Christ. And it should be showing, um, it, baptism is actually the outward show that you are crucified with Christ. Number two, you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Are we together? So, um, when people argue all these plenty things, I have them a single person. So, if they baptize me, will I go to hell? <laughs> I get what I'm saying. And if I come out and publicly say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, by an action, whether I call it Old Testament, religion, will it take me to hell? Are we together? All right. Praise God forevermore. And also, it doesn't mean that if somebody is born again and he dies and he cannot be baptized before he dies, that he will go to hell. Are we together? Because he has, a, with the mad heart man believer, the mad confession is made unto what? Unto salvation. He has confessed the lordship of Jesus, but the public show, he didn't have the opportunity to do that. But salvation has been secured already. When we have the opportunity to do public show, and after the public show, you should also do another level of show, which is what? Preaching the gospel. Are you getting me? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay. So, um, look at Romans 6, verse 3 to 5. It says, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. 
Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. So that's just what this is foreshadowing. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what he's just showing forth. And Jesus had to fulfill every aspect of the law. Amen to Jesus. And he had to do that publicly. You see, when Jesus said, it is finished, eh? he didn't say, it is finished. It was a loud cry. Publicly. It is finished. Jesus never did anything privately. The only thing he did privately was when he went to talk to the Father. Prayer. The only thing he did privately was prayer. Everything was public. Because why? He came to publicly fulfill the law and to save man publicly. His crucifixion was not a private business. It was a public business. You get what I'm saying? So everything about the gospel except for prayer. That's how he said when you pray, go to your closet. Go to your closet and pray. Uh, prayer, the only thing that we keep private you know, is our prayers, talking to God on the one. But when it comes to um, um, our, our showing forth that we have resurrected with Christ, it's a public testimony. Amen to Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Alright, so this means that without baptism of John, Jesus will have not made his righteousness complete before the Father. Are we together? He would have not made what? His righteousness complete before the Father. So it was important that the righteousness was complete before the Father. The Bible talks about our obedience being complete. You know, it's important that it's so. It's important that our righteousness, righteousness is being, you know, being, being right with God, yeah? You know, and um, a right standing before God. Yeah, the Bible says that in um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he made him sin, to God, to no sin, and he made the righteousness of God, the guidance. With Christ, what he has done, he has made our right, he has, his, right, his, his righteousness was complete before the Father. His obedience was complete so that he can stand for us before the Father as what? As complete. So, Jesus sought for complete righteousness. He never, he never left any T uncrossed. He never left any I undotted. Are we together? He did all of that because of us. Amen to Jesus. And if he did it for us, we can stand in his finished fulfilled work of the law and do what and also appropriate it in our daily lives amen to jesus hallelujah to jesus i believe you are blessed by this teaching we would like to get your questions and um we trust god for answers that would bless your heart thank you for your time god bless you grace to you Beloved, thank you for listening to this teaching. We believe you've been blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Kindly send it to us via email, chimdiohahunaministry at gmail.com. I would love to request, if you have not made the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, why not make it a date? Why not make this prayer today? Answer this call of salvation and repeat after me. Dear Abba Father, I know and accept that I am a sinner. I believe that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for me. I confess my sins to you and denounce sin and the devil. With my heart, I believe in and receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. With my mouth, I confess the Lordship of Jesus over my life. Thank you, Abba Father, for making me your child and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' precious name, amen. If you want to give your love seed of any amount to Grace Life Comedy Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank, Ghana. Account number 33 one five four five five one two zero one three with swift code m b g h g h a c and to give in cities 
You can still send via Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-254-551-2017. And to give in Naira, you can send through Echo Bank Nigeria. Account number 554 102-0592 For further inquiries and mobile money payments or even sending us a WhatsApp kindly use the number plus 233 594 God bless you. Jesus is Lord.